So how did this project get started? This project I started by um, Environment Canada. The people that are involved is uh, Chapel Island itself, the band. If it wasn't for them, you know, this wouldn't be happening. Lori Souter, Kenny Basque, uh, Sandra Basque. And I thought about this over and over for a number of years. What can we do to, um, to help this water to be a lot better to drink? Last year I thought about it and I said, we have to do something. What if I sent some boys over there? and start cleaning that. We approached the band with the help of encouragement with them. Um, Lori Soder, Kenny, Quentin. We approached them and we said, lend us some mute. We'd like to have some mute that are very interested in something like this. We've got five youths to help us with this. I needed a job and this one just appealed to me the most because it's, it wasn't just a pointless job. This job came up and it interests me. I wanted to help my community any way possible. I wanted to help and clean our drinking supplies. My friend Daryl told me, and uh, I worked with him for the past four years, and he told me to work with him. My old boss needed helpers for a new job he got contracted on. He just wanted to make a difference in the reserve, and I thought it'd be a good idea to follow along, help him make that difference. I got involved from the, the Chaplain community band office. They hired me on to do the job because I got all my papers to cut and I'm certified and all that. So what's an average day like with your team? It's tiring. It's hot. It's messy. It's dirty. Well, we start out about 8.30. We, we get there. We sharpen the saws, we get all our gear on. I'll go down there and we guys will all be down getting your saws ready and I'll just get my boots on, my, my hard hat. and Go out to the stream every day, put my boots on. People get the chainsaw ready because I'm not registered to do it. The ones that uh, use the chainsaws put their chainsaw pants on. We use helmets and sanitary gloves and boots. They're just crossing over and Walking down a little bit to get to where we're at right now. By the time we actually get down into the stream, it's about nine o'clock. Then we go into the, the brook and we start cutting and cleaning gunk and all that out of the brooks. What kind of stuff do you pull out of the stream? All sorts of stuff. It, it needs, really needs our attention. Pull out old bicycles, old two by fours, old metal poles. There's it's a lot of a lot of junk in there. We found uh, Tim Horton's cup, and over here, oh, we found another tire. I think that's uh, lucky number five. Car tires, car rims, two by fours with nails in them. Find full blown bikes in there, and sometimes we find pieces of uh, metal in there. Brian's just making his way over to the the alders. Uh -huh. water that's going in the streams is from the lake. If that doesn't flow, then our, our drinking supply is going to be all dirty and mucky. And this guy over here is stuck. They had to pull him out of the muck. It's almost up to the brim of my boat. That's really how deep of the stuff we're in. It's our drinking water. It's it's our tap water. There's no other, there's no other body of water around here that we can, there's no other watershed that we can take water from for, for our water tower. All around the shore now, it's I say about 20 feet from the shore, out all around the lake, it's it's nothing but a swamp. What once was clean water that, that was full of fish and and life is just a big swamp. We can start moving these different kinds of logs, the bikes, the carcasses, the the dead wood. We can start moving that. That will be the start to to move that out of our stream. This was our start point today. We've been in here for a total of 25 minutes now. And this is where we're at over there. Here's one of our brush piles. We, we have many of them. It's just the alders and the brush that we, that we pulled out uh, from the side of the river. We take it out of the stream and we, we throw it out over the, the bank for, for later on when we have a a place to properly dispose of it. We're in phase one right now. Uh, it's important that we focus on phase one 
there's numerous uh, stages that we have to go through still, but when we reach those stages, when we have enough funding for those stages, we will reach it and we will accomplish it. I just want to say that I, good luck to all of us, man. We are the water keepers and we are going to clean this mess up. What is your role with the water keepers? My role with the water keepers right now is that I'm the president of the water keepers because I'm the funder founder of the water keepers itself. My role is to make sure that uh, we have good healthy water for the community, make sure it's passed on. Prior to water lines, everybody had a separate well. Each household, like, they had to pretty well use this tool to find water. My old man owned this. Uh, my old man was a water keeper for many years. And uh, he, he would use this tool to find water in the ground. My father was John Basque. He managed uh, the water for about 25, 30 years. He was the first chief of Chapel Island in 1953, after the centralization. And at that time, he was always busy looking after the water, no matter what. Water was the most important thing to him. This is why I call it Chief John Bass Water Keepers. At the very beginning, it was a very informal gathering of, uh, of us. It was decided that uh, a group of people be uh, brought together and create uh, what is known as uh, water keepers. We have met a few times, and my role is co-chair. Again, the role of the water keepers is um because my role in the band office has been with housing and public works. I, I would say it's more technical advice and if there's a problem with uh, trying to find something, they need a map or whatever to find locations and I helped them with that. There's six of us that are cleaning the streams right now. We're all part of the water keepers. I'm part of the committee and uh, I'm trying to help everyone open their eyes. I think it's, it's, it's very important what we're doing, how we're cleaning it up. I think that in order, to, in order to preserve the water, we have to restore it first. Just surprising to me on how bad it is and how, much, how important it really is to us. How important is it to you? Well, really important because I have two kids of my own growing up at home with me and if we have no water supplies, they're not going to have any clean drinking water to have. This is one thing only that you know, this community has to look at and protect to help me protect it. And you guys as youths to help me take care of it. If there was one thing you could do for the water, what would it be? Try and get people to actually realize how important it is what we're doing and how important our water supplies is. How would you go about doing that? I'd just start talking to people and start talking to the chiefs, start talking to the counselors, start talking to people around the reserve that live here. I would join it. I'd become part of the water. I'd become part of the water so that I could take all of its yucky stuffs, blockages and everything and push it so hard down the stream with my water power till it's all out. I cut down alders, clean out the stream, move all the guck and whatever make to a river flow. There should be more stuff going on down there to make the flow happen. Keep it clean. I'd do what I'm doing. If it was in my power, I'd keep people from, from littering. I'd teach people to respect it. What can community members do to help? They can, um, first of all, they have to stop littering. Don't throw any garbage in the water supply. Don't throw any dead animals in our water supply. Be aware, you know, take care of your own water. You know, that's a vital tool for the community. Uh, to have community meetings about water, you know, to make people understand how vital water is to them in this community. Because there's only one source. That's why we have to work together as a youth, 
as our leaders and project coordinators. You know, give them a hand and say thank you. Thank you for taking care of our water. The most basic need in human life. And this is what we all need to do together. I think the information sessions, the public meetings that they, they have that are open to all the community, I think it's, I think it's vital that pe more people start coming to them. I think that they have to, in order to, to help, in order to contribute, they have to know what's going on. So I think it's very important that they start coming to these meetings. And our leaders have to say, okay, we are going to support you 100% to help you look after our water. What will the water keepers do next? The water keepers are going to be the ones that will be able to protect you and the children in the future of this community.